Acute kidney injury refers to an illness with a sudden, reversible, and rapid decline in the renal function, causing a retention of nitrogenous waste products such as blood urea nitrogen and creatinine. The kidneys has a number of functions. For example, the kidney is used for excretion, production of hormones known as erythropoietin, regulation of blood pressure, and acid-base balance, among others. Clinically, acute kidney injury results in a failure to maintain fluids, electrolytes, and acid-base hemostasis. They may be either non-oligoric, whereby the patient produces urine output more than 400 milliliters per day, oliguric, less than 400 ml of urine per day, or anuric, whereby the patient produces less than 100 ml of urine per day. Acute kidney injury can be classified according to the underlying causative agent into three classes, pre-renal, intrinsic, and post-renal categories. Let's start with the pre-renal acute kidney injury. The appropriate physiologic response for renal hypoperfusion is pre-renal acute kidney injury. If hypoperfusion of the kidneys is uncorrected, intrinsic damage ensues and hypoperfusion can be caused by any condition which is characterized by hypovolemia, low cardiac output, systemic vasodilation, or intrarenal vasoconstriction. True hypovolemia manifests with a fallen systemic arterial blood pressure, setting in motion corrective neuro and humoral responses such as activation of baroreceptors, sympathetic nervous system activation, and renin angiotensin aldosterone system together with ADH release. However, these compensatory mechanisms fail if the mean arterial blood pressure is less than 70 to 80 millimeters of mercury. The causes of pre-renal kidney injury. The causes can be classified as the conditions causing intravascular volume depletion, such as hemorrhage due to trauma or gastrointestinal bleeding, gastrointestinal losses, for example, vomiting and diarrhea, renal losses like drug-induced or osmotic diuresis, and adrenal insufficiency, skin and mucous membrane, for example, burns and hypothermia, third space losses, for example, hypoalbuminemia and pancreatitis. Conditions causing decreased cardiac output, for example, myocardial infarction, valvular pericardiocardiac diseases, pulmonary hypertension, pulmonary embolism, mechanical ventilation, and systemic vasodilation or antihypertensive drug usage. Then conditions leading to renal vasoconstriction, for example, norepinephrine and liver disease, sepsis, or hypercalcemia can cause pre-renal kidney injury. Impaired autoregulation, for example, in angiotensin converting enzyme inhibitors in renal artery stenosis, autoregulation. The renal causes, these are the disorders causing renal injury and can involve the glomeruli, tubules, or the interstitium. The most common causes are acute tubular necrosis prolonged renal ischemia and nephrotoxins. Glomerular diseases reduce the glomerular filtration rate and increases glomerular capillary permeability to proteins and it may be inflammatory, for example, glomerulonephritis or the result of vascular damage from ischemia or vasculitis. Tubules also may be damaged by ischemia and may become obstructed by cellular debris, protein and crystal deposition and cellular or interstitial edema. Tubular damage impairs the absorption of sodium, so urinary sodium tends to be elevated. Interstitial inflammation, for example in nephritis, usually involves an immunologic or allergic phenomenon. Postrenal causes of acute kidney injury. Postrenal azotemia or obstructive nephropathy is due to various types of obstruction in the voiding and collecting parts of the urinary system. Obstruction can occur within the tubules when crystalline or proteinaceous material precipitates urinary caliculi. caliculi. Obstructed ultrafiltered flow in the tubules or more distally increases pressure in the urinary space of the glomerulus, therefore reducing the glomerular filtration rate. 
Obstruction also affects renal blood flow and initially increasing the flow and pressure of the glomerular capillary by reducing afferent arterial resistance. Obstruction of the level of the ureter requires involvement of both ureters unless the patient has only one single functioning kidney. Bladder outlet obstruction is probably the most common cause of sudden and often total cessation of urinary output in men. Others include retroperitoneal fibrosis, benign prostate enlargement, prostate cancer, cervical cancer, and urethral strictures and valves, also in meatostanosis and The clinical features of acute kidney injury. Oliguria is the most common in these patients. Anuria sometimes is rare but indicates acute urinary tract obstruction or vascular occlusion. Sometimes urine volume is normal and increased but with a low glomerular filtration rate and reduction in tubular reabsorption. Plasma urea and creatinine is increased and clinical features of advancing uremia include anorexia, nausea and vomiting followed by drowsiness apathy, confusion, muscle twitching, hiccups, fits, and coma. Respiratory rate may be increased due to acidosis, and anemia is the most common due to the inhibition of erythropoietin production, or blood loss due to hemolysis. Bleeding occurs because of the disorders, platelet function, and disturbances of the coagulation cascade. Hypotensive and tachycardia with postural hypotension can be present in these patients. Patients with sepsis may, be peri may have peripheral vasodilation. Concealed blood loss may occur following trauma or intrapregnant uterus. Large volumes of intravascular fluid may be lost after injuries and burns or sepsis. So Hypokalemia is common in these patients and dilution or hyponatremia occurs if the patient has continued to drink free days by the oliguria. Metabolic acidosis is present unless the patient is vomiting. Hypocalcemia is there due to reduced renal production of 1,25-dihydrocholecalciferol. In the diagnosis, you conduct a detailed clinical history including a drug and intervention history, review of medical records, physical examination for example in weight and fundoscopy. The urinalysis as a routine and microscopic marked hematulia indicates glomerulonephritis, tumor or a bleeding disorder. Urine microscopic casts or dysmorphic red blood cells suggest glomerulonephritis. Leukocytes suggest an infection or interstitial nephritis and crystals in drug induced or uric acid nephropathy. Routine black chemistry suggests blood urea nitrogen, creatinine, electrolytes, bicarbonate ions, calcium, and phosphate ions, and then you compare with the previous heat results. Full hemogram indicates anemia in chronic kidney disease and fragmented red blood cells with raised LDH in thrombotic microangiopathy, low platelets and abnormal clotting in disseminated intravascular coagulation. Serology for example ANA, ANCA and anti-GBM complement proteins, cryoglobulins, protein electrophoresis and ASO. Imaging you conduct a brain radiograph of the abdomen, CT urography whereby the renal ultrasound reveals hydronephrosis or obstruction, and small kidneys suggest a chronic kidney disease. Renal biopsy can also be conducted. Then cultures of blood, urine, sputum, and wound will be needed as appropriate. Chest X-ray may re reveal pulmonary edema pericardio efficient and fibrotic change in systemic inflammatory diseases and in pulmonary hemorrhage. The treatment of AKI, you're supposed to establish and treat the underlying cause. For example, in hypovolemia, you manage the patient with intravenous fluids, Hartmann's solution or blood. Then critically ill patients may require ionotropic drugs to restore normal blood pressure. Acute kidney injury is associated with an inability of the body to maintain hemostasis, derangements in an electrolyte and water metabolism, the valent hemostasis and acid-base balance. Therefore, control of these, all of these derangements is important in managing your patient. Then you withdraw nephrotoxic drugs. Parental nutrition may be needed in these patients. Infection control using antibiotics. 
immunosuppression for example in glomerulonephritis you use corticosteroids and hemodialysis or peritoneal dialysis may be required